Final Fantasy XV came out two and a half years ago. The game was met with mixed feelings. Waiting ten years for a game ultimately resulted in some insanely high expectations that only a game that didn't have any flaws could meet. Well, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. But it didn't sit well with players that had developed a ten-year hype for it. The game itself released with a season pass next to it, granting that there will be three DLC episodes for the three extra characters part of Noctis' party. What ultimately came to be was the cancellation of the second season of DLC, aside from Episode Arden. This makes Episode Arden the final chapter and the nail in the coffin for Final Fantasy XV. A few things to keep in mind with this review are 1. Episode Arden is a $10 experience. While the base game is a solid $50 experience, I may be more generous with points in some aspects. 2. You will not understand most of this without playing the main story of Final Fantasy XV to its end. Spoiler warning, from here on out, this video will contain episodes for Final Fantasy XV's main story, as well as small spoilers for episode Gladio, Prompto, and Ignis. Should you desire to play those before buying this piece of the game, you should do that before viewing this. Episode Arden is a separate purchase from Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition and Windows Edition. He's alive. <laughs> Just as the ancient texts told. Episode Arden takes the perspective of the Imperial Chancellor himself. The story outlines pieces of Arden's past that are important to his motive and personality. The story pulls a few surprises and twists to those who are not into reading into the stories like me. Episode Arden is a tale of a man who was betrayed by those he called family. It's a tragic story that opens up the truth of Arden Azunia to the players. The story satisfied my interests and made me like Arden even more than I had before. Well, time to set to work. Attention all units, this is your captain speaking. Episode Arden's gameplay is solid but disappointing. I really did enjoy it, but it falls short in a few areas. Arden is differentiated from other playable characters in different ways when compared to the other three character episodes. Episode Gladio and Prompto mostly take a linear approach to gameplay. Ignis is mostly linear, but with some open elements. Arden's episode takes place in Insomnia. It offers a small open world for you to explore. Thankfully, you don't have to run everywhere. Arden can shadow step to different rooftops and poles. The issue with shadow step is that it's restrictive. You know how I said you can shadow step to rooftops and poles? Well, that's it. You can literally only shadow step to rooftops and poles. While it looks cool, the restrictions make it a lot less interesting. Insomnia is destructible. Not all of it, but some of the structures can be destroyed, which adds to your overall score. The score doesn't do much, but if you're into destructible environments, it's kind of fun. Finding all 77 treasures is a chore but it's not too hard if you take over sectors. Taking over a sector involves destroying four barrier producers and taking down a guardian. This isn't very hard to do, and there aren't that many, so you won't lose complete interest in it, but it does get a little tedious. Arden is basically Noctis on steroids. He has four weapons he can use and switch between as he chooses. The Royal Arms are Arden's default weapon. When using these, Arden can warp strike, fire barrages of swords, and if you string together five hits, you can demonify an enemy, which instantly kills them. Arden has a sniper rifle, which he can use to take down enemies from afar. I personally found no use for this at all, since enemies have eagle eye vision and can see you from 50 miles away, and the map is littered with random quick time encounters, which defeats the purpose of having a sniper rifle. Arden can use magic, and by that I mean one spell. It's flashy, but it is only useful against weaker enemies. Ifrit can be summoned for a brief period of time. He's also useful, but it feels kind of like an add-on to Arden's power. When Arden's HP hits zero, he goes into overkill. He can't demonify enemies in this form, and his mobility decreases, but his attacks do much more damage. If Arden gets hit enough times while in overkill, he dies. But if you stay in overkill for long enough without dying, 
Arden's entire HP bar restores, eliminating most of the difficulty of the game. Overall, Arden's combat style fits the fact that he was the antagonist of this game, and that he's been alive 2,000 years. However, the downside to the combat is that the camera doesn't really function at all. Sometimes it works, and other times it kind of just does what it wants, and sometimes it's very hard to tell what's going on in a fight. Oh my, what big walls you have! All the better to look down upon his enslaved subjects from. Episode Arden looks the same as Final Fantasy XV does. There's no major graphical upgrades, but it's impressive nonetheless. The music is good, but Arden's battle theme is a little unfit. I don't know who picked a rap song for him, but it's kind of the last thing I think of for Arden's character. The boss battle themes are very good. Darren DePaul delivers an emotional and powerful performance as Arden's voice actor. Though the breathing part with Arden was a little weird, I guess he just got out of a two millennia imprisonment, so it makes sense. If anything else I have to complain about is the walking animation. Arden's walking animation is a little bit weird, and it's not that big of a deal, but I don't think his leg animations match up with his arm. It is an honor to be recognized by the great King Regis, yet permit me to stand on ceremony and introduce myself nonetheless. Arden Izumia, Chancellor of Niflheim, at your humble service. To put it short, Episode Arden closes Final Fantasy XV with a strong backstory for the primary antagonist. It's overall a worthwhile experience, despite some of its flaws. If anything, the least interesting part of the game for me was the combat, but that doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that everything else kept me more engaged, and the combat was kind of secondary to that. Lord, wait, at least.